Hello everyone, welcome back to Creative Kiosk and a very happy new year to each and everyone. Today I'll take you to Kenya Railway Museum. I'm hoping to experience a lot of history. I hope you'll have a great time because I'm expecting to have a great time myself. So let's see what happens. Let's get going. This is the entrance to the Nairobi Railway Museum. Stunning graffiti welcomes us to the museum. This museum has exhibits displayed from East African Railways and this was opened in 1971. The CNN international anchor and reporter Mr. Richard Quest also visited this remarkable museum. Noteworthy point is, during the railway line laying is when many of the Indians who are so well settled at the moment have come over to lay these railway lines. That generation struggled really badly and they have seen those hard times and they have provided for the current lucky generation I feel. So the first ever railway line was called Lunatic Line and it started in 1896 from Mombasa on the Kenyan coast and finally reaching Kisumu on the eastern shore of Lake Victoria in 1901. Lunatic, as you all know, is called Mad Line. This was called the Lunatic Line because they did not know that this would go successful. They knew it would be a failure in the process. Uh, the reason it could be a failure is because of the political pressures in the then government, in the then British colonial rule, the rising costs and the conflicts within the people who are working on the railway lines. It took five and a half years from May 1986 to December 1901 for the 931 kilometer railway line to be completed at a cost of 5.5 million pounds. Around 2,493 lives were lost totally when laying these railway tracks. This laying of the railway line costed an estimated four lives for every mile of track along the way. Some deaths due to a pair of man-eating lions of Sao. They are very famous around in this part of Kenya. To know more about the man-eating lions of Sao, we need to watch a movie called The Ghost and the Darkness. It's about the famous man-eaters of Sao. Or even get a book on Amazon called The Man Eaters of Sao by Colonel J.H. Patterson. He wrote his experiences with the two lions when they were laying the railway line. They say to get connected to a place, you need to know the history. And what better place than to visit a museum to get to know the history of that place? This famous railway line led to the creation of Nairobi or rather Kenya. So... In short, a railway created a country. Sir Charles Elliot, a British officer during those times, quoted, It's not uncommon for a country to create a railway line, but it's uncommon for a railway to create a country. So true that is. It's just because of the railway which was created back then. We have this Kenya. The British regime wanted to extend its power by improving the infrastructure in this country. Imagine the hard times these railway workers faced during those days walking through hard and mountainous terrains laying 582 miles of a meter gauge railway in East Africa, all done totally by hand, no machines available to them in those technical tasks. This railway museum showcases and displays all those items used by those workers and the officials working on those railway lines during those olden times. There are items on display from the railway dining areas. Back then in those days, the cocktail shaker, egg cup, oil and vinegar server, copper ashtray with a rotating ash pan, toast rack and many other items here. These are chimes which are used to call passengers uh, if when the meals are served on board trains and ships. When these chimes are rung, the passengers know that the food is served and then just they can just come over to the dining area for their food. This is the menu back then. 
Look at the prices on and the tariffs. It's 17 shillings, 10 shillings and 5 shillings. Interesting, yeah? This is the sofa used by Queen Elizabeth II on her visit to Kenya. The first ever visit to Kenya. Queen Elizabeth II was the head of state and was known as Queen of Kenya for a period from 1963 to 64. The water filters which were used on board the railways during those times, it's an aluminium pot. This was a bicycle which was used for inspection on the railway tracks. There was always a problem with such bicycle on the tracks. It always used to slip off from the tracks. Back then there was no other means of transport and the Britishers used these trolleys in the streets of Mombasa to travel from place to place. Very interesting open means of transport that is. This was the official handing over of the museum. If you can see that's a Singh driver. Now you see the importance of Singhs or Indians in Kenya. This is a Singh created to wash hands inside the trains so what we understand with this setup is there was no running water and pipes in those regions and they had to be hand carried this is a seat in front of the engine because east africa has beautiful sceneries to experience and there used to be officials who used to sit in front of the engine to view those beautiful sceneries of kenya american president theodore roosevelt and also Prince of Wales sat on this particular chair of this engine. These are the chairs and the kettles used by them back then. This is a locomotive headlamp that is fitted to the engine on the front. An old clock in one of the stations. The chairs used by the staff back then. These are the embalmed lions at Field Museum in Chicago. They're the actual lions which were only embalmed and preserved. So let me tell you more about the famous duo, the man eaters of Sao, the lions. One of the lion was 2.95 meters long from the nose to the tip of the tail and took at least eight men to carry it back to the campsite. Chicago's Field Museum has the two lion bodies still displayed.
that's a ticketing machine look how huge that is these are those oldest calculators i wonder how they used this calculators back then wow massive manual calculators these bells were fixed in railway stations and immediately this was rung after 5 minutes the train would start these were heavy bells fitted to steam engines these are the ticketing bags and ticketing equipment Savo is a region in Kenya. Though lions are most dangerous animals in Africa, very few lions have a reputation for being man eaters. So what's so notorious about these two lions of Savo? Let's check into its story. So in 1898, British soldier and a hunter went to supervise the railway track being laid in the Savo area which was already terrorized by these lions so the mainless male lions stalked the railway workers campsite at night and used to drag the workers from their tents when they were still asleep the workers did not want to work on the railway lines anymore on 9th december 1898 patterson shot one lion in the hind leg it escaped and but came back and started stalking patterson the same evening he shot this lion again 20 days later the second lion was also found and shot six times over the course of 11 days the lion died gnawing on a fallen tree branch still trying to reach out to patterson now interesting facts about the lions the x-rays conducted on these dead lions showed that these two lions had some serious dental issues hence these lions used to hunt people for their own practical reasons as it's easier to catch humans and chew isn't that interesting i'm sure many of you did not know about this fact
display railway engines. There is also a locomotive which was used in the 1985 movie Out of Africa about Karen Blixen's stay in Nairobi. I have mentioned about Out of Africa movie in several of my earlier videos too. If you have missed them, please do go check my previous videos as well. Karen Blixen has been a very famous personality back then in Kenya. Wherever I go, there is some connection to this lady. A large steam engine that used to haul heavy loads over long distances and steep inclines of the narrow gauge track. It seemed to be a time capsule to me. The rising skyscrapers around only reminds us of the very quick changes that are happening to the world around us. That was a very fruitful trip. I really enjoyed every bit of the museum. I hope it was educative and informative as well for you all. If you did like it, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Creative Kiosk Kenya for more interesting videos in the future.